Yo, what is good, Jets Nation? Let's break down day number three for the New York Jets in rounds four, five, six, and seven. It was a very active day for the New York Jets in day number three. They made two trades. They got two extra picks. They first came into today with three picks, and they came in with five total picks, rounding out the entire 2023 draft class, including day one and day two, with seven total players. I'm really excited to break down these prospects because I feel like some of these players I like a lot more than others, and I feel like there's a couple steals potentially for the New York Jets. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section, guys, of these prospects that the New York Jets got in today's NFL draft. I'm really excited to break it all down, and do your boy a solid favor if you did not already hit that thumbs up button. Let's go, baby. Let's go, Jets. The New York Jets draft class is officially all wrapped up, and we'll, we're waiting to see the undrafted free agent pool in just a few minutes, actually. That's going to start coming after the NFL draft is all wrapped up. So let's get into it, baby. Starting off with Carter Warren. Carter Warren, I think, has a has a really big potential here. Now, a lot of people had high grades for him, the tackle out of pit, uh, but he tore his meniscus. And the reason why he fell to the New York Jets in round number four is because of that. People actually had him going in round two or, day, or round number three, a day two prospect, if he was healthy all throughout his collegiate career to finish off with Pitt. But since he tore his meniscus and since he's a big fella, since he has some injury concerns, he fell to the New York Jets. Joe Douglas spoke glowingly of him, said that he has every single trait that you want for an offensive tackle, and he thinks that his size, his athleticism, his balance, his ability to be a pass protector, he has every single intangible that you need to translate into an NFL offensive tackle. So Joe Douglas thinks that they might have got a day three steal in Carter Warren. And we all wanted offensive tackle for the Jets in the first round, but there was no offensive tackle available for them to take with that 15th overall spot. So if the Jets did get a steal on Carter Warren, that's a big time, big time, big time deal for the New York Jets. Now, is he going to be the starter week number one? We'll find out. He has an open competition with Dwayne Brown, Mekhi Becton, and Max Mitchell, and he has the body frame. He has every single trait that you want in an NFL-quality offensive tackle. He's not as raw as you think. Again, the reason why he fell to the fourth round is not because he's not he's a developmental piece. He's ready to play immediately, but his injuries was the issue, and he excels in pass protection. That's really what he's all about. He can play left tackle and right tackle, so I think, according to Joe Douglas, it seemed like this was one of those players that he was the most excited about getting to the New York Jets. Now, going on to the next prospect, which was another player from Pitt, Izzy, baby. A home run hitting running back, an electrifying man who has so much speed, next level speed. He's a former track star. He is also from New York, Brooklyn native, coming home. Izzy Abedekenda, man. This is a guy that I feel like slid to the Jets, and we all know that we have a stud in Brees Hall. And we have Michael Carter and Bam Knight. But you add Izzy to that mix of those three running backs, this running back room is filled with youth and filled with explosion, especially with Brees Hall. Izzy and Brees Hall are definitely going to be the one-two punch. I don't know what that means for Michael Carter and Bam Knight. They're going to go into the training camp with open competition. And hey, depth is not an issue. Competition is not a problem. So I'm really excited to see what he can do because this man had... 20-plus touchdowns last year, 1,400 yards. He's a home run hitter, one-cut downhill runner, and I think this is one of my favorite uh, prospects out of all the players that the Jets drafted in day number three, simply because of just a home run hitting playmaking ability that the Jets are trying to implement here with this offense, and I, I absolutely love this draft pick. Probably one of my favorite draft picks out of all of these. Um, now, getting into Zaire Barnes. Now, this is someone, you know, not really my favorite out of all these. I'm not going to give him the highest grade out of them all. Probably my least favorite draft pick, to be honest, out of these five that we're going to be breaking down today, uh, but he's a linebacker from Western Michigan. He's someone that's going to plug in at, at that off-ball linebacker spot compete with guys like Jamie and Truett, Hamza Nazaldeen, and Chaz Surratt for that out, uh, weak side linebacker spot. We did not re-sign Quan Alexander. I wish they will, but as of right now, they have not. He also provides special teams, and I know special teams is not important in our eyes, but it is. It's very important. It's not the, the flashy news, but Zara Barnes could provide special teams depth, and he does have some upside, but you know, not really my favorite prospect in the draft class, just being straight up with you guys. Jarek Bernard Converse. Now, this is an interesting prospect because he has so much versatility to that uh, Jets secondary. He can play outside corner, slot corner, slot uh, safety, and he can also be a special teams uh 
specialist. He has a lot of playing experience at Oklahoma State, and then he transferred to LSU. This is a guy that's adding to a secondary unit that needs a lot of depth for the long term. We got Sauce Garner. We got uh, DJ Reed as our two outside stud corners for the, for the foreseeable future. We got Michael Carter II in the slot, but this guy provides depth at that position in case somebody goes down for the long run. Bryce Hall's entering the final year of his contract. Brendan Eccles has two years left in his contract, so they're going to be competing for that spot behind those guys, and he also could be a safety, a free-roaming guy, or line up in the slot. So that really gives the New York Jets a lot of versatility in that secondary, and that's, the, that's my biggest takeaway from this, the versatility. Not to mention, he's also an athletic free. The athleticism of Jarek Bernard Converse really jumps off the charts, and uh, that's the reason why I think the Jets took a, took a flyer on him. Now, the final man has to be my second favorite or maybe my third. One of my favorites out of all of these prospects, to be honest. If I'm going to give you my ranking of my favorite of these five at the end, but Zach Kuntz, the tight end out of Old Dominion, is a player that was high on a lot of people's boards and another guy that fell all the way to where the Jets drafted him because of injuries. He got injured last year, and that's the only reason why he slid so far. This man is an athletic monster. Six foot seven, six foot eight. They do not make tight ends this big and this athletic. It just doesn't happen. This is somebody that can develop into an absolute monster for the New York Jets. He is going to be healthy and ready to go for rookie minicamp, and the Jets could potentially just got the steal of the draft with Zach Koontz. He's probably one of my favorites out of all these players that the Jets got. I know that the tight end room is kind of uh, pretty solid right now with Tyler Conklin and CJ Uzama and Jeremy Ruckert, and Kenny Yaboa, but there's a new scheme in place with Nathaniel Hackett. You don't know how much more years you have with C.J. Uzama. He's not going to be here long-term. Tyler Conklin, I, I like him this season, but you don't know beyond that. Ruckert, that's not his... Ruckert and Kuntz kind of have a completely different style of play. Like I said in the video about Kuntz, Jeremy Ruckert, all run-blocking, pass-protecting, could be potentially lining up as a fullback, Has a, is an underrated pass... Um, catcher, but Zach Koontz brings you that dimension of, I can go up there, I can be a route runner, I can go out, just be an absolute stud, and be just one of those game wreckers in terms of being a weapon for Aaron Rodgers for the long run. So Zach Koontz is definitely one of my favorite prospects that the Jets got. Someone that slid all the way to them, they got value, and they if you want to throw a dart at something in that, in that late 6th uh, six to 7th round range, you got to go after one of the most athletic pieces available, and that's what Zach Koontz brings. So out of all five of these guys, I definitely think Izzy and Zach Koontz are my two favorites. They're the flashiness, but Carter Warren is someone that I think has a lot of upside to potentially be a starter for the Jets at a tackle spot. Maybe not this year, but in a couple of years or maybe even this year, you never know. Carter Warren can be a guy that I think is NFL ready today. And then my next favorite behind uh, those three is probably Jarek Bernard Converse because I love his athleticism at that spot and his versatility in the cornerback safety special teams room. And then finally, last is Zara Barnes. Probably not my favorite. Um, I just don't really think that we needed... I know a lot of Jets fans want linebacker, want linebacker, but I don't know. Barnes is not really someone that I, I really have a lot of hopes for because he's somebody that was a late riser on people's draft boards Usually those guys don't really pan out in the NFL. I kind of would prefer Hamza Nazardine and Jamie and Sherwood to win it over him. But if he just is on the team for special teams, I can't complain. And hey, you can't win on every single draft pick. But Zara Barnes, definitely not my favorite pick out of all these guys. So my final ranking is probably going to be Izzy number one, Zach Koontz number two, Carter Warren number four, Jarek Bernard Converse number four, and Zyra Barnes, number five. Now, it's hard because I like Carter Warren, but the flashiness of Izzy and the flashiness of Zach Koontz really is getting me excited. And then we're going to make – I already made videos breaking down Will McDonald and Joe Tipman, so I'm not going to do that in today's video. But, guys, let me know your thoughts of day number three for the New York Jets. Hit that like button if you did not already. really helps out the channel a ton. It's been so much fun covering the 2023 NFL Draft with you guys here on Jets Media. I'll catch you next time. Let's go Jets, and let's go see who the Jets sign in on Drafted Free Agency. I'll see you then. Peace.